Next, let's talk about Ruby, um, which is probably the biggest thing you've worked on, right? Uh, biggest reveal thing, yes. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, you know what's actually really interesting is uh, today, uh, July 18th, is actually the uh, anniversary of Ruby. It's seven years ago. The first episode came out today. Hmm. I, was, I was looking that up uh, earlier today. thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I guess, can you talk a little bit about your day-to-day -day process at Rooster Teeth? I mean, it's about as simple as any other animation job, I suppose. You know, you show up to work, you animate, you have lunch, then you animate more and go home. Sometimes you get reviews, sometimes you hang out with your coworkers, but that's about it. You know, it's just a simple two-year-long job that I worked on for some time after school. Right, right. Um, I think you mentioned to me before, like, uh, your team, you and your team were pretty close. Like, you guys would hang out after work and stuff, right? Yeah. Is that uh, like typical of a animation studio, or yeah, it's typical of workspace workplaces in general? I feel you know, you get a group of like-minded individuals working towards a common goal, so naturally, it's natural to assume that you know you get along. Of course, there's the age difference that usually you have to take into account. Like at Rooster Teeth, everyone was very young. Most mm. people were in their early twenties, mid, mid to late twenties. So as a result, we got a lot closer than most studios would. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, cool. Uh, and then you mentioned that. Before you started working there, you hadn't actually watched the show before, right? You, when you got hired, you actually binged the whole the whole thing. Of course, I think yeah, so once you, right. you know start a new job in two years, that's pretty much the only direction you're going in. Mm, it it was like uh, three seasons, um, back when you started, right? Uh, four, five, four, somewhere around there. Really? Okay. Um, so working at on uh, Ruby and at Rooster Teeth, um, in general. Did you um, get any uh, chance to have any output, or <laughs> did you uh, have any input in the hmm. story? The story, of course not. Generally, no. That's the writer's and director's job. My job is to bring their vision to life, as any artist is. Right, right. So, so they never like ask you like, "Hey, what do you think of this?" or Unless anything. It's animation related, no. Okay. Like, you know, how a character would act in a scene, gotcha, what kind of actions gotcha. they would take. That's the only, that's about it, really, for any person of my position. Actual story elements is always left to, you know, whoever's actually in charge of the story. That's their job. I'm not going to, you know, tell them how to do their job. They wouldn't tell me how to do mine, usually. Right, that that makes sense. Um, so it's kind of like you talk about, like, um, how this character would move or whatever, right? Of course. Cool. Um, so th explain to the audience, I guess, because for the people who aren't too familiar uh, with this mm -hmm. world, um, are there like different roles uh, in producing a show like this? I'm assuming someone does like the character models and then someone else creates the background, oh, yeah. or is it like, okay. Just like any other show, or really any, literally anything you make, because there's different people who have different jobs to do different things. I mean, um, okay, go ahead. Yeah, as far as, as far as our production went, it's pretty standard for any animation studio, really. You know, you got your art department, your animation department, your post post production team, and there's all sorts of various jobs that you know, that go through to make this pipeline. Um, I mean, there's a lot to explain, but in general, you know, you have. Yeah, you have concept artists, uh, pre-vision development, you have your modelers, your riggers, your texture artists, your lighters, your animators, of course, your layout artists, pretty typical stuff for the for a traditional animation pipeline. Okay, so so it's not like one person animates an entire scene or anything like that. Everyone has very specific uh, roles that they do. Well, I mean, the animator, yeah, they would animate the scenes, but the person developing the assets for the scenes is someone else entirely. And the person to touch up those scenes and edit them is, again, another department entirely. So the like the character model, the lighting, that's all different people. Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, it's like it's like an actual film set. You know, you got your actors and you got your light department, your makeup department, your cinematographers, your writers, all that stuff. Everyone just has their own job. Okay. The only difference is ours in the computer. Gotcha, gotcha. Going back to Ruby, um, the I guess I kind of want to talk about the origins of Ruby. And so the guy uh, who created Ruby, Monty, right? Um, he created it as kind of like a side project. Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I'm not really familiar with the origins that much. I just kind of worked there for a while. Okay. Um, well, as far as I guess, as far as I know, um, no, it wasn't a side project. It was kind of more of a passion project of his. Something that he really. Oh yeah, passion passion project is is what I meant. So, I mean, I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is because this wasn't even like their main thing that he was working on, right? This was a passion project of his. And well, the idea was that Monty was hired on to work on Leopards and Blue for a couple of seasons, and. Eventually, he had the idea for the show itself, which he then pitched to the CEOs, who they like, which they liked, and you know, that's it. And they started working on it. This show, would you say this show is basically what put uh, Rooster Teeth on the map? No, Red vs. Blue was, 100%. Okay. It definitely tapped into a different audience base than RBD, but 
it was Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth was already pretty well known at that time in the horror movie. Because I'll be honest, I I never heard of uh, Rooster Teeth before Ruby yeah, came out. Point, video games. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, Rooster Teeth and Red versus Blue in general was very well known to a lot of people I knew growing up around the time. So I kind of knew, I kind of had, had an idea of what they were doing before uh, I went in. I mean, would you say this kind of brought them like more into the like mainstream almost? Though? Uh, no. No. Okay. Like, I mean, it's definitely tied into the anime audience, but not the mainstream. It's kind of already done. Okay. Most people, okay. like most people I know, who don't even play video games. Are already familiar with Rooster Teeth just from Red vs. Blue. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I always assumed like this was the project that put them on the map. They were saying like this was the show that they started like selling DVDs at Walmart and stuff. I mean, again, Red vs. Blue already kind of had that. Okay. Thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was it's a fan base project that was a very popular property in their heyday. So. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not a gamer, so I I had no idea. Um, cool. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's, I think it's really cool when these, like, indie projects take off, you know, like, small, um, small companies like these, um, like, the guys who, the guys who created, like, Ninja Turtles, right, they were just, like, like, screwing around, kind of, it was just two guys, and they created a, uh, parody of Daredevil, and, um, you know, now it's taken off like it has, and so, now that Rooster Teeth has become much better, bigger and genlock was also another show that you worked on correct Mm -hmm. um okay i'll admit i haven't watched it yet um but it did have some (laughs) yeah uh i haven't had the chance yet but i probably will um but there are some really big names attached to to genlock um from what i researched uh Maisie williams from game of thrones was in it Mm -hmm. um david tennant one of my favorite actors uh, mm-hmm. From Doctor Who, um, Jessica Jones, uh, and Michael B. Jordan was also in it. Um, you know, Chronicle, Creed, Killmonger, mm-hmm. one of my favorite uh, actors as well. Um, so a lot of a lot of star power. Um, I mean, when Genlock was coming out, was the like were there higher expectations or? Well, naturally, of course, you get that many big names in a big budget show, so it's natural to assume that more people or you know higher profit margins are expected. For you specifically, or your animation team specifically, did they say like, I mean, was it any different from working on Ruby? Did they say like, we got to raise? Okay. No, they didn't say anything specific, like, you know, work harder, but it was was (laughs) kind of natural, you know, new show, big name artists, so everyone kind of felt the urge to, you know, work a little harder than usual. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, I think you mentioned to me that uh, before it came out, they would test, like, actors, they would take their voices and test uh like footage with them and stuff and to see if they would be a a, a good fit for a character mm-hmm. a lot of actors were considered for the role but how, how many are you allowed to say like how many actors they I mean, I no did idea. test I, okay you I don't know no i wasn't part of the testing process i was working on other stuff at that time so mm-hmm. yeah cool um yeah i mean if you can talk a little bit more about your day-to-day at rooster teeth to be honest well, I mean, there's really not much to talk about you know it's just go to work animate sit in the review and then you're done do you? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You meet like the writers or the voice actors or and no. stuff or no? No. Okay. Our meeting usually just has the boring. director and our leads. And it's pretty straightforward. You just they tell you what they want, they'll show you what they have, and you just explain. Sure. How about this? Walk me through like a whole episode. Let's say. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. So like, oh, yeah. coming oh, out yeah. with a new yeah. episode, what is the step by step process I mean, from the start to beginning? Involved. You gotta understand the animator's not involved the whole episode. We're only involved our part of the episode before it passes to the next person in the pipeline. That's why it's called the pipeline. You know, it's like feeding something through a pipe. You feed the pipe, it passes to the next. You get them from the previous part to your part, it passes to the next. Again, you gotta understand. I'm not involved with it, and I'm not very well informed. So about you don't it. you don't know too much then about yeah, the whole. Okay, I'm, okay. Like the most, like most parts Damn. I'm involved with are my part in the parts of directing before and after. That's what I'm most familiar with because of what I do for a living. Mm. The rest of the part, I mean, I have a vague understanding of like. 